So people have been asking me how to simulate fire as well as the fiery particles. This is the exact tutorial for that, so let's get into it and not waste any time. So first, I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to add a plane and scale this by 0.5 times so that it's 1 by 1 meters. And then go to Object, Quick Effects, and Quick Smoke. Now, get the domain and the emitter settings already set for us. We're going to scale the domain to a reasonable size, probably something like this. Make sure there's a bit of space at the bottom of the plane emitting, the plane emitter, so that it simulates. And go to your physics properties, select your emission object, which is the plane, and change the flow type from smoke to fire, because we're simulating fire, of course. And change the resolution to about 64. And hit play. Now, immediately, we get nice looking fire. Well, actually, it's not that nice. It is lacking a lot of detail and it is only moving straight upwards. So how do we fix this? Well, first things first, we can go under fire. To add a bit more detail, we can increase the vorticity to like 1.2, and immediately, you can see there is, much, there is much more detail now. Well, wait for it. There you go, the detail is starting to show up. Now, there's a bit of detail, but now this, the fire is clipping up at the top of the domain here. And it seems to be a little too long since fire in Minecraft is about one block in size. It should be as about as tall as this cube. So to shorten the length of the fire, we can increase the reaction speed to like one. And now if we play back again, we can see this is probably the right length now. However, now we, found, we find ourselves in another situation. The fire is rising only perfectly upwards, and that might not be what we want. And also the detail is kind of... Well, the, right now the detail isn't showing much, but I assure you, once you increase your resolution to like 100, then the detail problems are going to be completely gone. But anyway, let's make this fire look a bit more interesting, shall we? So. Uh, before that, we should save our project just in case of any blender crashes, we lose all our progress. And since it's getting a little too laggy, we shall set our bake type to modular and check is resumable in case we want to resume our simulation bake. And now we have the bake data button since it's modular now. We also want to choose a simulation cache folder, which I have already created prior to this. Fire, let's delete this because this is another failed attempt. I'm gonna accept it in this folder and that should do it. I'm gonna save it again. Now, to make our fire look more interesting, we can add a force field and turbulence. And with this, we get this empty right here, which we can move around. And we need to animate this empty or uh, force field to move from one place to another so that the noise the force field noise is like kind of like moving through the fire so that it kind of blows in the wind. So to do that, we're going to keyframe this force field empty from frame 1 to frame 250. So I'm going to enable auto keying here so that we can keyframe by just moving this around. So as you can see, if I move here, a keyframe has been added for us. And you don't need any specific direction. Just move this from any random location and yes, you can see now the empty is moving, which is nice. Might want this to move a little bit faster. So I'm gonna bring this further apart from each other. And there you go. Now, as you, you can see, the movement's being uh, bezierly interpolated. So we don't want that. We want this empty to move across a distance in a, con in a constant velocity. So I'm gonna select the keyframe, hit T, and bring this to linear. And now the empty shall move in a constant velocity, which is what we want. And that should do it. So now if we bake this again, I'm gonna wait for a while. You can see now the fire looks a lot more interesting and this is pretty much exactly what we want. You can see it's kind of like blowing in the wind. So yeah, now we can bake this at a higher resolution, probably a hundred, and this should be ready to go. So that's free data and bring the resolution to 100, save that and bake it again. And now we finally get a pretty high resolution fire. 
You can go even higher resolution if you want, but this seems fine to me. I don't know why there's a little bit of, never mind. That's probably just the force field acting on it. And yeah, I th we, we can move to shading now. So let's open up the shader editor, go to the shading tab and immediately let's add an attribute node. Let's change, let's use the heat attribute and add a color ramp and attach it, attach the color to the color ramp and to the emission color right there. And I think we can delete this cube now because we don't need it. I'll go to render it view. As you can see, we can see nothing right now. That's because we need to increase the emission strength. And there you go, we got something going on here. And we should cut out the extra parts. We only want the fire part, as you can see here. The heat attribute is giving us more to work with, which is why I like it. It looks a little more realistic, in my opinion. And let's cut it to like right there. Now, it doesn't quite look like fire because we need to change the color to like an orangey color. Maybe increase the emission strength. That's a bit too much. Actually, I think my color management is that standard. Bring it to Filmic so it doesn't clip. And okay, right now it still doesn't look like fire. It doesn't look quite like my fire. So you got to add an extra point that is black at the end here. And immediately you get a lot more detail as you get a lot more contrast. I think we can bring the saturation down just by a tad so that it looks a little more realistic. And now we can crank the emission color. And as you can see, we got some pretty high quality and nice looking fire here. Let's bring the density to zero so that it renders faster. And another thing you can see is that over here, it looks kind of glitchy. It's like kind of pixelated. Most people think it's because of lack of resolution, but the real problem is actually because of the interpolation. So you go to your materials tab under settings and volume, bring your interpolation from linear to cubic and immediately all those uh, glitchy patterns are gone. And this makes it render just slightly slower and it makes the fire look slightly less detailed because it kind of smoothens everything out. But it it's sol solving all those glitchy patterns is honestly a worth trade off in my opinion. And lastly, you can see this plane over here, which if I hide the smoke domain, you can see this plane. We can easily remove this by going to visibility and disable all this so it's be invisible. And there you go, the fire is basically done. Now let's move on to the particles. Now, um, since this fire is like lagging our viewport here, um, we gotta disable it. So go to your toggles here and enable viewport toggle and we can disable this in the viewport so that it plays at solid 24 FPS now. So for the particles, I would just duplicate this fluid emission plane and scale it down just a bit so that I can differentiate between the fluid emission and the particle emission plane. And now it's time to organize things so that we don't get confused ourselves. So I'm gonna remain, rename the smoke domain to fire domain and rename this plane to fluid um, or fire emission plane. And for the second plane, it's the particles emission or just fiery particles, I like to call it that. And now you can go to your physics tab and disable fluid. Actually, I just remembered I had auto keying enabled and it keyframed all this. So I'm gonna remove the keyframes. We don't need to keyframe that. And now go to your particles tab and add a particle system. And immediately you get some particles if you play this, but this is not what we want. The particles shouldn't fall down. It should go upwards. So we, we gotta disable gravity so that the particles doesn't fall down. So go to viewport, oh no, field weights and disable gravity from here. And immediately particle starts to float, which is what we need it to do. And it's moving a little rather slow. So I'm gonna bring the velocity up to like five meters per second, maybe six meters, uh, five is good actually. And yeah, now it's just shooting in a completely straight stream which probably isn't what we want. So we the real magic here is to go to physics and give it some Brownian motion, probably 50. And now it should spread out like fiery particles here. And yeah, this is exactly what I did. It's just a bit of Brownian motion. And also the frame end is at 200 frames. So I wanna bring it to 250. 
now we can and now we can um, I can see the particles are like disappearing we can add some lifetime randomness so that it disappears the particles yeah it disappears at random time at random um, lifetimes looks more realistic that way and now we can crack up the number of particles like 10,000 and this should be good maybe 15,000 or 20,000 more particles the more realistic but don't add too much this should be good right now it looks kinda like too much cause the particle size the halo size of these particle previews are large but when we instance it it should look pretty good so now it's coming down coming down to the particle instancing we gotta instance a, a particle object with glowing emission material for each and every particle here so to do that I found that you can just use the simplest mesh ever which is a triangle for the particles since they're gonna be scaled down so small no one's ever gonna notice so I'll just take a plane and select the top two vertices and hit M and merge at center this will give you a triangle and I will move it down just a little bit like that to make it more of an equilateral triangle and I'm just gonna move this up here so that it doesn't I want to bring it away from our fire since we're going to be rendering that and we don't want this one to be seen and I'm going to give this an emission material so I'm going to go to the shader tab, add a material there remove the principal shader and use an emission shader instead plug it to the surface and if we go to a rendered view you can see this is a gl glowing triangle give it obviously a reddish yellowish um, color and as, as we brighten this up, it would look more yellowish. Probably going to use a strength of 50, and this should be great. Now, let's go back to our particles here. And go back to your particles properties, and under render, select render as object. And everything is gone, that's because you need to select an instance object. And I forgot to rename this, let's rename this as fiery particle and go to your fiery, fiery particles plane and now we can instance a fiery particle and there you go and right off the bat you can see all these triangles are facing the same way and that's not what we want so we're gonna give this some random rotation so enable rotation crank all these parameters up to the max and now you get some triangles all randomly orientated which is exactly what we want and I also just realized all these um, triangles are wired frame and with so many triangles it kind of looks messy so go to your viewport display and display as solid so now this looks better now obviously they're way too large and you can see the individual triangles so you're going to want to de decrease this, the scale to like 0 .0, 0 0.0025 I guess that this works fine and give it some random scale as well so that there's variation in the scale and it looks more realistic and now if you render this this should look hold up oh yeah also I forgot the ray visibility for this has to be enabled for all of this because otherwise it'll make the particles invisible as well and now we have some particles here now don't worry they look like really unnoticeable but we'll fix that later now we can enable our fire back and we got fire with some particles here which is great also it's best that we bake our particles out because you know when we scroll scrub through our frames you can see it's not baked yet and it's gonna change when we scroll through the timeline so go under cache hit bake and it's gonna bake all the particles out and now this is set in stone your particles will look like this until you unbake it so now we can enable our fire and time to add the camera so I'm gonna bring the aspect ratio of the um, scene to like a square because we're rendering one block of fire and you know a 16 to 9 aspect ratio isn't quite suited for this job also one more thing this part this particles plane as you can see it's it's showing in the renders so to remove this thing under particles properties you want to go to 
render and disable show in the middle. Now it's still showing here, but that's because we're in the viewport and we gotta disable in the viewport as well. So disable view, show emitter in viewport display and the render and it should be gone. So now, uh, for rendering sake, I'm gonna bring the emission of the world to all the way to zero so we can see the fire really clearly as well as the particles. And one thing that's gonna make the particles look really good is by enabling depth of field. I'm gonna bring the f-stop to pretty low. And I'm gonna go to viewport display and enable limits so that we can see where the camera is focusing at. So now it's like right there, I'm gonna bring the distance, focus distance to at the fire here. So now, this should look decent. And you can see certain particles will be blurred out more than the others, which would make it look better, basically more realistic. And lastly, when you're rendering this, make sure you render in motion blur so that the particles will leave a trail of motion blur behind, making it look more like particles instead of dots on the screen. So now when we render this, render image, you can see all our particles are leaving, are leaving trails behind, as well as the fire. If you render this into a sequence, it would look pretty elegant. The fire would evolve and rise up, as well as all the particles. And we definitely need more samples for this, so I would render it like 500 samples. And that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. Really nothing much to this just fire and some particles, that's it. That, it really is everything about fire simulation. There you go. Thanks for watching and good luck on simulating some fire, y'all.